Hello everyone, Reza here. In today's video, I will show you a demonstration of a desk reservation solution that I built by integrating multiple Microsoft 365 services together. I leveraged Microsoft Visio to build a diagram of the office space and put the desks in there as shapes so that the users can select specific desks. Upon selection of that specific desk in the Visio, the Power App, which is contextually aware of the selection of the desk in Visio, allows me to make a reservation and all of that data gets stored in my database and I have a Power BI report that combines all of these together. So let's check it out. We have an inventory monitoring report that's connected to a data source and Power BI is giving us all the statistical details of the sales, the target and what's available in stock in the inventory. The Visio diagram is a floor map of the store where this inventory is being managed. And with the Visio visual, we can zoom in and we can zoom out of the Visio diagram. Apart from that, the shapes that you add in Visio, you can define properties for those shapes. And Power BI can be contextually aware of the shape that the user selects. If I select this particular section here, as I select that, on the right hand side, it filters the data based on the inventory that's placed in stock number 35, which is set in the backend data source. Quotes are maintained in stock 35, sales are 3, and 35 are in stock. If I click on t-shirts here in my Power BI report, the Visio this time directly zooms in into that specific section where t-shirts are maintained. And t-shirts currently have 20 in stock and 13 have sold. So I can see that right here. And as the store manager, I can see the information about my sales and what's in stock live as things move in and out of the inventory. Plus, I can visually see the locations where these specific inventory items are placed inside my store. If I want to see what's selling the most, so for example, I have sports jackets here. If I select this, it highlights it right here on the Visio diagram and this is right at the entrance of the store. Now there's good documentation on this. I will post this link in the description of this video. It has a link to the sample Visio of inventory monitoring that I just showcased. Plus walks you through a very nice example of a lead management use case wherein you have the Visio diagram which has the flow of the lead management process and you have an Excel file wherein you have your data. It walks you through how to connect it to Power BI and connect it to the Visio. Now I created my own use case in which I created a desk reservation solution. In this Power BI report, I have a Visio diagram that has my office space defined here and I have the different desks that are available for the users to reserve. And this I'm using the Visio visual inside of Power BI. On the right hand side here, I have two visuals that are showcasing data related to the desks that have been reserved. So for example, desk number 10 has been reserved two times. At the same time at the bottom, I have a chart that shows who are the users who are reserving these desks and how many desks have they reserved. Power BI has a Power App visual wherein you can include a Power App right inside of Power BI. Now Power BI is great for visualizing data. However, if you want to create, read or delete your data, you need to leverage Power Apps. And here I have Power Apps inside Power BI. And all of these different services, Power Apps, Power BI, Microsoft Visio, they are all integrated and connected to my data source and they are all contextually aware of each other. Reza is logged in. So the Power App says, welcome Reza, it's contextually aware and I would like to reserve a desk. Now on the left hand side, I can see all the information of the desks that are available in my office. I can zoom in and look at all the desks or I can zoom out. Now let's say I want to reserve desk number seven. If I just select desk number seven, Visio is directly zooming into that specific shape that I created. When I selected that, that information is now being contextually passed over to Power Apps and Power Apps is now aware that I'm trying to reserve desk number seven. 
Now I'm recording this video as of the 9th of July. So it picks the next day and I can of course pick any date from the calendar. So let's say I want to reserve this for the 14th. I'll select the 14th of July and I want to reserve desk number seven. I'll click submit. Now the moment I hit submit, it goes ahead and says your desk has been reserved. And if you observe the charts here in Power BI, they will automatically refresh and show me the latest information. So I just reserved desk number seven. The data here is being updated on the fly because I'm leveraging direct query against my data source, which is Microsoft Dataverse. And in my Power App, it shows me all my upcoming reservations. So here's desk number seven, that's reserved on the 14th of July. Now I can go ahead and delete this reservation. It says my reservation has been canceled. And the moment I do that, the data set in my Power BI also refreshes. Now here in the upcoming reservations, for the 15th of July, I have reserved desk number five and 11. So now if I just try and reserve a desk without making a selection on the Visio or filtering my data in Power BI, if I switch over to the 15th, it will showcase all the desks that are reserved. So five, 10 and 11 are taken. And I can only select the other desk. Let's say I want to reserve desk number three. I click save. So desk number three is now reserved. Now I'm signed in to that same report with a completely different user. Here's Sarah who signs into that same report. And when Sarah goes and tries to reserve a desk, let's say for the 15th, Sarah can see that all of these desks are taken. And Sarah can pick the other desks that are available or Sarah can just directly go and select a specific desk. So let's say desk number 16 is what I want to reserve. If I select this, Power Apps will be contextually aware plug that desk right here. I make the selection for the 15th. I click submit. The data will be refreshed and the charts will represent that live. And if Sarah goes to her home screen, she can clearly see that she has three desks reserved. So how do we go about building a solution like this? Well, first what we need is a Visio diagram. So I created a very simple Visio here. And in this, I added shapes and my shapes are nothing but these chairs. And for each of these shapes, I have defined some information. Now, in this case, I've just kept it very simple. I have added an ID to each of these shapes that I added and my ID span from ID one to ID 21. Those are all my desks that I'm making available for my users. And this is a picture of my office space. Now creating a unique property in Visio is important because you want to connect your data set with Visio so that you are contextually aware of what is being selected in Visio. Once I have my Visio diagram built, I went ahead and I uploaded in OneDrive. And for this Visio diagram, if I go to the three ellipses here and go to embed, I have this option here which says embed URL. This is what I will need when I add the Visio visual in Power BI. The data source that I'm leveraging is Microsoft Dataverse. And here I have created two tables. One is desk information. And in this, I have the names of all my desks and the IDs. And desk ID is that unique key, which I'm going to map to the shape. The shapes that I added here, I have the ID property. And this I will map to the desk ID. I also have another table called desk reservation. And in this, I am maintaining all the reservations that the users are making. And I've kept it extremely simple. I have the desk that the user selects, which is a lookup to the desk information table. I have the date that the user is reserving on. And in the name attribute, I'm just storing the name of the user. Now, once I have that built out in Power BI desktop, the first step for me is to connect to my data source. So I'm going to select Dataverse because that's my data source here. I'll pick direct query in this scenario because I want my data set in Power BI to refresh when any change is made to the data source in Power App. So for that, you need direct query for the environment. Just copy the environment URL. Just put it right here. Click OK. This may prompt you to sign in. In my case, I'm already signed in. So it's asking me for the information that I want to bring in. In my case, I bought in information from both those tables. I'll click load. 
And now I'll have that connections being created right here in my Power BI report. Let's say for my desk information, I'm just gonna add the desk ID and I'm gonna put in the name column. So I have that tabular data now that will be represented right here. This is all my desk IDs and my desk names. I need that Visio visual. So for that, go to three ellipses here, go to get more visuals and search for Visio. Add the visual. Bear in mind, the person who is creating the Power BI report will need a Visio plan license. The consumers do not need it. I'll select this. So I've added the Visio visual. I need to first provide this with fields to populate this visual. Now what's my unique key for each shape? It's the ID of the desk. So I'm just gonna select the visual and select the desk ID. And once I do that, it's gonna ask me for the Visio diagram URL. Back to my Visio, if I go to the three ellipses here, go to embed, I need this embed URL. So I will just right click, copy this, go back to Power BI desktop, paste that URL here, click connect. Bear in mind, when you are sharing the Power BI report with your users, you also need to ensure that you're sharing that Visio diagram wherever you are storing it, OneDrive or SharePoint. So here I have the Visio diagram in place now, and I have an option here called field mapping. Now here on the ID, if I open this, I can see all my IDs that are being mapped to each of those shapes right here. For values, I can once again add the desk ID and it adds that here and I can format this. I can go to colors here and start adding colors. So for example, desk one to six, give it a specific color. I can define colors for each of those desks or define them in the form of a range. And that's exactly what I did for my Visio. Now I can also add the name of my desk here. And for that, I can display it as a text and I can define where I would like to position it in the Visio. So if I start zooming in, you will see that the desk name is right here. So this is desk number seven. If you don't want the label to show up, just remove this. So this is desk number seven. Next, I went ahead and added the Power App Visual in Power BI. And once I added that, same scenario, just define the fields that you want to pass. I just passed the unique ID, which is the desk ID. And once I had that, I went and created a new app. So this is the Power BI report that I was demonstrating earlier. If we look at my Power App here, the only thing that I'm passing to this is the desk ID. That's why Power App is contextually aware of the selection that I make in the Visio diagram. The moment I pick a specific desk, Visio will zoom into that shape at the same time, Power App will be contextually aware that the user has selected a specific desk because I'm passing that same data point or field to Power App. And in this Power App is where I get that Power BI integration object. That's because I created this app directly from Power BI. I have a full video on this wherein I walk through the entire process step by step. So if you want to learn more, then definitely check that out. I'll put the link in the description of this video. Here, apart from the Power BI integration object, which lets me know what's selected, I've even gone ahead and connected directly to the underlying database, which in my case is Microsoft Dataverse. I connected to both desk reservations and desk information. Here I have a simple gallery that I formatted. It shows the current logged in users, upcoming reservations. And when the user goes to reserve a desk, there's a simple form here that the user fills out to reserve the desk. One key thing I did was when the user selects one specific shape in that Visio, basically one desk, even though I'm on the home screen in Power Apps, I'm redirecting the user to the form screen. And the trick that I used is by creating a simple toggle control in Power Apps. The default property is count rows Power BI integration dot data. This gives me the data that's coming from Power BI. That's that desk ID that I was passing to this visual. Count that data set. If it is one, that means the user has selected a desk. In that case, this toggle will be set to true, else it would be false. If it is true, in that case, I query my data source, grab the desk information, 
and redirect the user to the next screen. So this is where that redirection magic happens to take me to the next screen when I select a specific desk in my Power BI report. And once the user submits the form, which is connected to my desk reservation table, on success of this form is where I notify the user. But at the same time, this is that key function that refreshes the Power BI visuals. Basically, it's direct query. So it goes ahead and performs the query again against my data source. And that's why the data inside Power BI refreshes on the fly. And it's like a live refresh, unlimited refreshes. So to wrap it up, integration between Microsoft Visio, you need a Visio license to create, not to consume. In case of Power Apps, the users will need a license to access the Power App. And of course, you will need the Power BI license as well in order to share the reports with your users. From a sharing standpoint, you have to share the Power BI report. You have to ensure that you're sharing the Visio file no matter where you're storing it. And you have to also ensure that you're sharing the Power App with your users. So you have to ensure that you're sharing all of these different services correctly with your users in order for them to have this integrated experience. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.